Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this video is called Making Alien Terrain in Gaia. So for the last several years, I've been working on and off creating a top-down shooter video game called Testudo. It's inspired by arcade classics like Raiden or Truxton, and the more recent Ikaruga. So I decided to make a simple test in Unreal Engine to try out some ideas, as well as to familiarize myself with the Unreal workflow. And part of that was creating a landscape for my spaceship to fly over. And so I figured I'd try making the landscape in this terrain software I've been using for a few years now called Gaia. So this video won't be a comprehensive tutorial on using Gaia, but instead is meant to show you how I made the landscape for my game demo, show what features I used, and give you basically a taste of what Gaia can do, its workflow, and maybe inspire you to give it a shot. So first I'm using Gaia 1. There is a Gaia 2, which should be released from beta in the not too distant future, but the basics are, from what I can tell, pretty much the same. So here's the Gaia interface, and you can see it has different sections here. You have a view where you get to see your landscape. You have properties uh, here, and the properties are the properties of the various nodes that you're putting in your um, chain here. And then you have all the various nodes you can drop in from over here into this area. So um, there's a whole lot of different nodes that do lots of different things, but the basic workflow is you create um, a simple primitive of some sort, um, then you take it and modify it, which is this stuff here, then you add color, and then towards the end you export your color map and your displacement map. So for example, if you look here, this is a mountain primitive, which just creates a really simple mountain up here that you can use to then do stuff to. And there's a whole bunch of different ones. So if you look under here, the mountain primitive, there's um, you know a, a crater one. So this one, you can see, creates sort of moon craters. There's a rocky, which creates a sort of crumbly texture. So there's a bunch of stuff to start with. And then you modify it over here. So I'll just delete those and I'll show you what I have here. So we started with the mountain, and then what I did was I applied a modifier to the mountain called Whirl. And you can see what Whirl does. It has a bunch of parameters over here that lets you basically spin and twist the environment. So it's a little bit like creating craters, except it's twisting instead of just putting um, you know, indents into the ground. And so I thought that was a really cool um, uh, modification to do to the landscape. It really you know, felt quite alien. So um, this by itself wasn't quite good enough because I felt like it needed some more smaller detail. This was very swirly. So what I did was I created another node here, which is called a multifractal. And then inside here, I combined the two. So this is a combination of the multifractal and then also the whirl um, that was done to the mountain. And then this clamp, all that does is that just changes the height of the thing so it's not quite as crazy. This would be a, a pretty crazy landscape and, and also might interfere with the spaceship that's gonna be traveling over it. So once I had the basic um, displacement or more specifically the geometry I wanted, next came texturing. And so the first step was getting a general texture here. You can see as I zoom in, um, this adds a bunch of little details and it sort of follows the, um, the, the geometry underneath. And then once I have that, um, the black and white, I then apply a gradient and you have all these different gradients you can choose from. Um, well, I guess technically they're not gradient, but they're, you know, a bunch of separate colors. And what it'll do is everywhere that's black, it applies this color. Everywhere that's white, it applies this color. And then applies all these other colors in between as you go from one to the other. So in this case, it takes the grayscale here and applies the colors to it like that. Then under here, I have another one, which is sort of a rocky map, which you can see it creates all these sort of rocky impressions. And then I went ahead and colorized that with some more strange, you know, alien looking uh, colors because I wanted it to feel as though were some sort of other planet, not just our planet. And I then took those two and I combined them together to get this result here. And then I went and did another coloring and this is called slope. And what slope does is it just calculates what the slope is of something. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to add a separate material uh, or a separate color to just the, the parts, um, the sort of swirlier parts. And so you can see here what it looks like with just these two mixed together. But then this is then combined with the slope. And so you can see that it really accentuates the spirally bits because those spirally bits get this uh, more yellow color going on over here. So almost done. And then the last little bit is because I wanted uh, this to be very, very large, 
Um, what I wanted to do instead of just having a single tile, which is what this is, is I wanted to make the tile repeatable. So basically, um, you know, make sure that whatever is over here repeats over there. So I could stitch a bunch of the same tile together inside of Unreal and then move over it. Um, and so that is what this does over here. So if you look at the regular environment, that's it there. But, you know, this part goes down, um, the part over there is going up. So what this does is it makes sure that whatever is over here by blending blends in with whatever is over here and the same to all the different sides. So now I basically have a tileable um, piece of geometry and uh, it does the same also with the uh, texture. So it also makes sure that the texture is tileable as well. And then this is the final piece of geometry, both the color and the model uh, all together inside of Gaia. So after creating the terrain, the next step was to export texture maps both color and displacement maps for use in other software. In my case, I exported a displacement map and color map to 3ds Max, assembled the landscape there, and exported it as straight polygons as an FBX to Unreal. For making a real game, I wouldn't just export the high-res mesh for poly count reasons, but since I'm making a quick test and not a fully optimized game yet, it was faster to export the mesh as is. And despite the poly count, it actually worked pretty smoothly. You can see that here. This is four repeats of the tile, and I gave it a blueprint in Unreal to move it downwards while my spaceship traveled over it blowing up enemies. Anyway, I had a lot of fun doing this little test. I'll likely continue to push the demo forward in the future, and who knows, maybe it'll end up being a full game someday. But in the meantime, I hope this video inspires you to give Gaia a try. I've used a number of terrain generators over the years, and this by far has been my most favorite. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this, please go to neilblevins.com and go to the art lesson section. Or if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video on my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much.